Right down floor, so he must have kept his off or something. Right down floor, so I'm picking up some other guys or something. Like Good evening, everyone. As this is a safe key event, um, I'm just saying you can take your masks off. Um, if you, when you get up to walk around, the students and guests, when you get up and walk around, we ask that the masks be put back on. Okay, thank you. Good evening, board chair, Mrs. Cece Powell, head of school, Mrs. Parker, trustees, staff, parents, invited guests, and my fellow graduates. It is with great pleasure and pride that I welcome you, friends and family, to the graduation ceremony of the class of 2021. This is one determined group of people because even a global pandemic couldn't stop us from having our graduation. It goes without saying that you are all here today because without you, this wouldn't have been possible. For us, your support, love, and guidance 
have been monumental over the past years. I'm sure you've witnessed the late nights, early mornings, IA writing, university meetings, and all the stuff in between. So, on behalf of the graduating class, I send a heartfelt thank you. Today we have gathered to celebrate an amazing group of individuals. A year group who have grown up together, laughed together, cried together, learned together, studied together, procrastinated together, and will eventually change the world together. Though this graduation officially marks the completion of our time here at BHS, I can't help but look back on the journey. September 4th, 2008, what a day. I remember being on the courtyard on my first day of school and everyone was so tiny and moms, dads, nanas and papas were taking photos and gushing over their little ones and how they were suddenly growing up. In my room, I have that photo, wearing my little name tag and a huge backpack that was at least half the size of my body. My friends know that bag-wise, clearly not much had changed since then. <laughs> but on a more serious note, so much has changed since then. Throughout our 13 years together, or for others, our seven years together, we have developed into such strong, determined, and able individuals. And graduates, we should be extremely proud of ourselves. If my journey at BHS has taught me anything, it has been to keep the end in view. To get to this point in our high school careers required hard work, perseverance, and resilience. At times, it required sacrificing what was fun or exciting to study for exams or do homework. But in the end, it all paid off, because here we are, getting ready to flip the tassel and get our international currency. Despite what was thrown at us in different moments in our journey, especially during our senior year with the pandemic, we had an end goal in mind, to get to this moment, and we continue to strive towards it. And now, here we are. Like our school song says, ever guiding to the goal, ever guiding to the goal, purity and strength of soul, purity and strength of soul. I think during torch ceremony, we sang the song, but it isn't until you reach moments like these that you really realize and appreciate what the song means. It is a call to action for us, reminding us to continue to keep the end in view and continue to prevail. As we prepare to leave this place and step into the next season of our lives, we can take this nugget with us. We will all go on different paths and set different goals and ambitions for ourselves. But no matter what they are, we can remember this phrase and go on to accomplish great things. For some, this is a really happy moment. For others, it's more sad or even scary but remember to embrace it and enjoy it. We have all worked so hard to get to this point. So with that said, I invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy the graduation ceremony of the class of 2021. Thank you. Thank you, Leonie. Very well said. Um, I think I know what it means to have to follow a BHS girl. <laughs> so, head of school, Mrs. Linda Parker, trustees, staff, parents, invited guests, those joining remotely, and of course, our graduates. Good evening. I'm Cece Powell, chair of the board of trustees of BHS. And it's so good to be here. Isn't it great to be here? All together, in one place, under one tent, in actual chairs, 
instead of cars, as I understand, last year. I'm especially happy to be here today as I have a special affinity for this group because I've had the pleasure of growing up, or not growing up, sorry. <laughs> I feel like I'm growing up, of watching you all grow up from the sidelines of soccer fields and uh, sports days and watching you perform on stage. So on behalf of the Board of Trustees, let me start by extending a sincere and heartfelt welcome and congratulations to the class of 2021. Should we clap again? <laughs> I'd also like to express some thanks to our parents and guardians. Thank you for your support and patience through this challenging year as the school has navigated constantly changing circumstances protocols, rules, guidelines of the pandemic. Promise I won't mention it again by name. To our teachers and administrators, thank you for keeping our BHS community safe without interrupting teaching and learning. And to the class of 2021, I have no doubt this has certainly not been what you envisioned for your final year at BHS. <laughs> but you rolled with the punches. And despite having to give up many of those rites of passage that others were afforded before you, you have led this school with calm, resilience, and heart, and we thank you. Today is your day. We are here to celebrate you and your time here. Whether you've been here for 13 years or you've joined along the way, your time at BHS has been about growth, exploration, discovery, preparation. Each of you individually and collectively have grown, explored the world around you, discovered your potential. You will be forever bonded by your time here, perhaps more than any other class. <laughs> As for preparation, I think we can safely say you can step into the world boldly. You are ready for whatever comes your way to respond to the unexpected, rise, and revise your plans as you go, uh, lead with uncertainty, find silver linings. But for all the learnings and silver linings, I imagine there are some things about that which shall not be named you might like to forget. Take the words and sayings, for example. Which ones would you most like to never hear again? How about unprecedented? or quarantine, or lockdown, or you're on mute. <laughs> For a time, my least favorite word of the last year was pivot. I know it probably seems strange, but I have a thing about overused words that become a go-to crutch in our day-to-day -day language. And it seemed everywhere I turned, I was hearing that word that previously it had meant that move in netball that I learned here at BHS many years ago. Now I can't listen to a news story or an interview on TV without hearing the word and honestly flinching. But I realized as I was preparing this speech that my, la my least favorite word is perhaps the most important and might be the most lasting lesson of these times. In her book, Wolfpack, soccer legend and activist Abby Wambach insists that women must let go of the old rules that neither include nor serve them and provides a list of new rules. She retells the lesson imparted in the tale of Little Red Riding Hood, who is told to stay on the path until she ventures off and meets the wolf and all hell breaks loose. As she says, as young girls, we are taught to follow the rules society's made for us and to stay on the path. But instead, she says, we must create our own path and empower ourselves to change the landscape of our lives and the world. While not necessarily by choice, the past year has taught us what it means to create a new path. The word pivot means to rotate on a central point and the pivoting action in netball, as you all well know, uh, means is, is, is a move where the player can swivel, I think, and turn and change direction. Right? Is that right? I think so. Many of you have already know, you already well know what it means to pivot or to create your own path. Over the past few weeks, I've followed the virtual graduation parade on Instagram. 
And reading your stories, I could tell that each of you have already made your mark in your own individual way. As artists, athletes, debaters, activists, surfers, sailors, leaders, role models. Your future plans and dreams are even more diverse, from classics to computer science, music to mathematics, culinary courses to traveling the world by caravan. Clearly, in your time here at BHS, you, each individual you, have already started to raise your voice, to exercise your curiosity, discover your own path. So my message to you is simple. Keep going. Venture off the path. Create what you need. Be what you imagine. And don't be afraid to pivot. Thank you. Good evening, board chair, Mrs. Cece Powell, trustees, staff, parents, invited guests, our virtual audience, and most importantly, you, the Bermuda High School graduating class of 2021. I'm just going to ask the students if you could just look at me, if you don't mind pivoting a little bit. Okay. Today's graduation is a proud moment in time for everyone here. You are a class that will go down in history. In September 2019, when you started the IB program, there was no way any of us here would have anticipated what the next two years would look like. We all predicted late nights, hours of studying, new opportunities being unveiled. We expected nervousness and excitement, working on projects, taking exams, writing essays, completing your IAs, your internal assessments, and applying to universities. No one thought that the basics of disease management, like hand washing, mask wearing, and physical distancing would become the norm. And when we look back on the last two years, we recognize that we are now all very different people. We have grown, learned to navigate this new world, and we have skills and abilities we wouldn't have learned otherwise. I must also recognize the anxiety, the uncertainty, and the nervousness we all faced during this time, and that we continue to face. We must always remember to do pulse checks on our mental health, make sure we address and acknowledge our feelings, and if we are overwhelmed, seek help and support. Graduates, as you move forward from this space, there are many lessons that you have learned. You now know that you can learn differently outside of a classroom, with and without your classmates, your teachers, and your parents. You've had to think differently and be creative with problem solving. You have overcome challenges and found new opportunities. You have discovered new ways to be successful. You have learned resilience, become flexible, and found new strengths. And these are the qualities that will stand you in good stead as you move on to the next stage in your life and as you develop your careers. My challenge to you is to take these attributes, find your place in the world, and make a difference. The world is no longer a huge, distant place. Our world is much smaller than we ever anticipated. Technology and social media give us instant access to some of the greatest minds in the world. We can use our phones and have conversations with global companies, CEOs, leading scientists, and people who are discovering cures for cancer. And likewise, you must not underestimate the knowledge and skills that you bring to the table. You have a perspective and a voice. Share your gifts and energy with the world. Many of you have found a passion, a cause you believe in, activities that bring you joy and focus. Continue to explore them. Find new ways to enjoy them. Move out of your comfort zone and make sure your voice is heard. You can and will make a difference. 
and your journey has already started. As Sheryl Sandberg in her book, Lean In, Women, Work, and Will to Lead said, there is no perfect fit when you're looking for the next big thing to do. You have to take opportunities and make an opportunity fit for you rather than the other way around. The ability to learn is the most important quality a leader can have. You are leaders. You are in a class like no other in the history of this school as you have spent most of your two years of IB in the midst of a global pandemic and with a good portion of your education online. You have set the standard and raised the benchmark. No one thought that you would not be able to sit your final exams in person and that your final grade would be derived from your internal assessments and predicted grades. Whatever your individual results, you should be proud of how far you have come. With your, and I couldn't resist this, with your international currency in your wallets, your IGCSEs and your IB certificates have the confidence that you are all well-educated and talented young adults who can accomplish anything. Spend that international currency wisely. Tonight, I would like to paint a picture about you, the 2021 graduating class, from some of your teachers. Mr. Cornish, he describes his form class as wonderful. In his class, he could find the full mixture of individuals representing 13 aspects of the human condition. And I'd like you to guess which one matches which student. Cheerfulness, curiosity, boredom, sleepiness, despair, hopefulness, honesty, intelligence, thoughtfulness, anxiety, serenity, sensitivity, and creativity. And he states he could write a novel or paint a picture with characters like these. And I'd like to just add that he was doing this first thing in the morning with a cup of coffee. So some of them are coming in different modes of sleep, sleep deprivation. Mrs. McMahon describes her form as a very diverse group of students who supported each other and remained tight through both good and bad times. Their diversity was exhibited through their cast experiences, which range from composing spoken word to building and deploying turtle grass cages, beach cleanups, to hosting a sleepover to highlight the issue of period poverty to year 10 students. Ms. Sylvia states that you, the graduates, have shown your resilience in adapting during the COVID pandemic. She is proud of how well you persevered through the many interruptions and dealt with the many challenges of the pandemic. You have industriously managed to apply to countries on both sides of the Atlantic to ensure that you have options during this uncertain time. You are adventurously setting off to Asia, Europe, and North America. U.S. bound students have faced one of the most competitive years in history with universities receiving record number of applicants, and you have fared brilliantly. In reading your college essays and statements, Ms. Sylvia states, she has no doubt about your compassion and your thoughtfulness, and you will contribute a great deal to the communities you join. Mr. McCulloch states that you are the first group that he has seen from the beginning to the end of IB, he couldn't be more proud of the grace and maturity that you've displayed when dealing with the pandemic over the last two years. He describes you as dedicated, hardworking, and ambitious, all the while not taking yourselves too seriously. Mrs. Barnwell laments how the senior netball team did not get an opportunity to finish their last season due to COVID, and she hopes that you can reflect on the journey that you fondly shared together and remember how amazing it felt to be part of something bigger, a team that lifted each other to no matter what challenges you faced. According to Ms. Taylor, your head of year, you are a strong group of compassionate individuals who watch over each other with a caring eye and allow each person to express themselves as they feel. Every day, each one of you demonstrates strength, some days it may be a drive to complete an assignment, and other days it may be listening with focus and care to a friend. And some days it may be just getting to school and doing the best possible on that day. 
and some days it may be asking for help. All of these are moments of strength. Ms. Hollingsworth commented on how you were positive role models for the younger students across the school. Mrs. Wedden enthusiastically described you as compassionate and stated how in the true essence of the IB philosophy, you have made the IB Center a better place through your caring and respectful natures. Mrs. Osset and I would like to comment on your strong leadership skills in a variety of areas and the ability to have a positive and empowering impact on other students. I'd just like to highlight the head girls, Leonie and Layla. They have been outstanding in their commitment, passion, and vision. They worked hard to promote a positive student experience with their uplifting messages in our virtual assemblies and their emphasis on student well-being and mental health. They dedicated many hours of service to the school with a variety of initiatives and projects throughout the year, culminating in the math mammoth task of planning Round Square Day in March. And at the last minute, there were major changes to consider due to the spike in COVID cases. Um, so Leila and Leonie did not falter, approaching these setbacks and their trademark positively and with perspective. This ability to roll with the punches, change direction, and persevere rather than give up is something that is common in every single student in the graduating class. Despite all the ups and downs, you are consistent in your resolve and will embark on the next part of the journey, the stronger for it. Mrs. Osset extended her congratulations to all of you for having made it through a most unusual end of high school. She wishes you happiness and a smoother ride as you start university, although she is confident that you can handle whatever comes your way. Graduating students, 18 of you have been at BHS since primary one. One joined in year five and one joined in year six. And seven of you joined us in year seven. And in my time as your head of school, I have found you to be talented, focused and driven, uh, and a driven group of young adults who weather challenges with resilience and dignity. You have consistently been tenacious, lively, caring, kind, spirited, charitable, and socially conscious young people. You are the leaders who will make changes, both large and small, in our society, whether that change is in our island or in the world. And today is the start of a new life for all of you the culmination of 13 years of hard work, determination, and focus. You are close-knit and consistently demonstrate unity and community within your year group and within the whole school. You've always been keen to volunteer and help out with the whole school events and initiatives. I'm just going to share the many ways through which you have uh, demonstrated your talents and initiatives over the years, and I'm sure you can identify yourself in these. You have successfully represented BHS or Bermuda in competitions. Many of you have demonstrated your prowess in sport and successfully represented BHS and Bermuda in sailing and athletic competitions from netball to volleyball to track. Many of you have represented the school well in local and international debate and public speaking competitions. You have developed or demonstrated your leadership skills by leading and participating in the student-driven anti-bullying group, the BHS Angels, by representing BHS in Bermuda at the Uni Eunice Conference, by successfully completing the Duke of Edinburgh bronze, silver, and gold awards, by serving as prefects, student leaders, house leaders, games captains, deputy head and head students, and taking BHS student leadership to a higher level by creating and leading BHS clubs for younger students, the debate club, the yearbook club, the coding club, the cultural cooking club, just to name a few, by assisting the EYP and primary teachers in their classes, by championing environmental work at the aquarium and the turtle grass project, by leading younger BHS students and promoting ethical entrepreneurship through various initiatives, you have contributed to the local and international communities by engaging in a variety of local community projects, partnering with KBB to clean up the island, volunteering with the SPCA, 
participating in the Lions Club food drives, feeding the homeless through the Grateful Bread program. By participating in an extended essay research study on the effects of screen use on sleep. By mentoring BHS year seven to nine students and students at Northlands Primary. By participating in international service projects in Tanzania and Thailand at a student exchange in Australia. By attending international and regional round square conferences in India, Peru, New York, and San Francisco. And as young adults with open hearts, by restarting the BHS playgroup for children with autism and Down syndrome, not to just acquire community service hours, but also because you truly loved the children. As a class, you have thrown yourselves into giving back through community service for various global and local charities. You also excelled in the arts. Some of you designed award-winning eco-friendly outfits and modeled them at the BHS Eco Runway Fashion Show. Many of you are outstanding visual artists and designers who have won awards in local and international competitions. You showcase your talents by playing musical instruments or by singing at school and at local events. And many of you have danced a variety of different genres in many of the local dance school recitals and concerts. Many of you have juggled schedules to act on stage, sing, design the costumes, run the lights and sound, or help behind the scenes the last few musicals. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, Anything Goes, Shrek, Mamma Mia, and The Little Mermaid. A couple of you have served as assistant directors and head of costumes in our school musicals. As I look out at you, I see young adults who have already demonstrated many talents and initiatives. We are proud of each and every one of you, and we thank you for sharing these with us. Student, let's, not, let's just very briefly talk about your academic achievements. Through the premier international standard that has been chosen by BHS, the IB diploma and the IB courses, you have had to learn to be self-disciplined and organized. You've developed time management and multitasking skills. You've had to achieve a high standard in subjects from several dis different disciplines, theory of a theory of knowledge course, and additionally, you've had to complete, most of you have had to complete a 4,000 word academic research paper and many, many hours of creativity, action, and service. All in all, not an easy task. You have remained true to your interests, talents, and goals, pursuing a great variety of courses at tertiary education. And for those of you who've declared your majors, this is interesting. S and when you think about innovation and STEM, these are the facts. Six of them are majoring in the arts. These are the ones that are declared. Six in business, eight in the STEM fields, one in legal, two in teaching, and two in medical studies. To the 12 of you who are pursuing tertiary education at universities in Canada, the six students going to the USA, the four of you who are going off to universities in the UK, the two students going to Bermuda College, the two taking the gap year, and the student who will be venturing further afield to South Korea, you are all well prepared for the next stage of your educational journey. Throughout your schooling, you have been encouraged to take the next step. You will now begin to experience the world as an adult, navigating tertiary education and finding employment that is meaningful to you. Remembering that your parents and extended family are in the backgrounds, available to help, cheer you on, support, and encourage you. With many universities offering classes online, students will be at home or in their dorm uh, learning uh, in the dorm room, learning and studying. And whilst this isn't the easiest way to make friends and have the full university experience, I encourage you to explore new ways to collaborate. Find new ways to experience your university years. Identify new ways to enjoy, learn, and grow. I pause here to acknowledge the teachers and the staff who have played a significant role in ensuring you had the tools and knowledge to learn and keep pace with the rigors of the IB program. They adapted where they had to. 
They worked around the clock and just to make sure that the students' needs were addressed and found innovative solutions to help ensure each student made it to graduation. And to them, I say thank you. Please join me. <laughs> to the parents, guardians, siblings, extended family friends, family members, and friends, you are indeed the village that has helped to raise your young person. You have supported, encouraged, cajoled, coaxed, prayed for, cheered for, and helped your student every step of the way. You have been there during the late nights, the early mornings, and every hour in between. You are recognized and appreciated. Your support of the school over the years have been invaluable, and on behalf of the teachers and the Board of Trustees, I say thank you. And can we join, join me, students? Thank you. Thank you. Graduates, I leave you with this poem that I hope will inspire you as you prepare to say goodbye to BHS and become the newest members of the Alumni Association. It's entitled The One in the Glass by Brad Stevens. When you get what you want in your struggle for self and the world makes you proud for a day, go to the mirror, take a look at yourself and see what that one has to say. Because it isn't your mother, your father, your partner in life, or your friend whose judgment upon you must pass. The person whose verdict counts most in your life is the one staring back from the glass. Some people might think you're straight talking and bold and call upon you with pride. But the one in the glass says you're going to fold if you can't look them straight in the eye. You're the person to please, never mind all the rest, because you're with you clear to the end. And you've passed the most dangerous and difficult test if the one in the glass is your friend. You may fool the whole world down the pathway of years and get pats on your back as you pass, but your final reward will be heartache and tears if you've cheated the one in the glass. With that, I will say to all of you, to your own self, be true. Know who you are, what you want, and where you're going. With confidence, determination, and courage, you will get there in the end. Stay safe, study hard, remember your alma mater, come back and visit us often. We are so very, very proud of you. Congratulations, class of 2021. I'd just like to call upon Dinah Babekas. And Dinah is going to perform for us on the keyboard Romanian Folk Dances by Bella Bartok.
protocol already being established, let's get started. All right. It has been an absolute privilege to work with every single one of you and your families. Um, the IB program is so much more than an educational program. It really is designed so that each one of you makes the world a better place. And for the last 18 months, our world has been the IB Center, and you have certainly made it a better place for me to come and work, so thank you, thank you. If these young adults sitting in front of us are the future, I think we're in pretty good hands, all right? Um, They think they're gonna make me cry tonight, and I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to. I'm not, I'm not, I've got three layers of waterproof mascara, it's not gonna work tonight. <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do is I'll start off and each row will come up, and I'll call out the names, I'll also call out where they're studying and what field they're gonna go into as well. All right, first row. It's only fitting, after Dinah has just finished playing, that we start off with Dinah Babekis. In September, Dinah will continue to follow her passion and study music at the University of Toronto. <laughs> Gabrielle Brackstone. Gabrielle will attend Concordia University in Montreal to study commerce while majoring in accounting. Kiara Bircher. Kiara plans to study mathematics and computer science at Western University in Canada. <laughs> Shayla Coloro. In September, Shayla will attend Guelph University to study international development and business. Aliyah Fada. Aliyah is planning to spend a year in Italy before beginning a degree in law and business at the University of Kent. Please admire the footwear as well as they come up. <laughs> Some of them have even changed footwear from the rehearsal this morning. And their hair. There's also been changes to hair. Brianna Fo, here's our intrepid traveler. Brianna is traveling to Jeju in South Korea to attend a Word of Life Bible Institute for one year. After that, she plans to either continue her education in South Korea or go to Canada. <laughs> Harley Kemp Brown. Harley plans to complete courses at the Bermuda College before studying 911 safety and communications at Fanshawe College in Canada. <laughs> Layla Kurt. In September, Layla will begin her studies in geography at either the University of Sussex in the UK or Queen's University in Canada. Linnea Curavilla. Linnea will be studying economics at the Duke University in North Carolina. J. 
Genevieve Lau. In September, Genevieve will begin a Bachelor's of Science at McGill University in Canada. Ashlyn Lee. <laughs> Ashlyn plans to attend Howard University for a Bachelor in Science in Mathematics with a concentration in math education. And I think <laughs> one thing we can all agree on is that we need math teachers, especially female ones, I think. Kiara Mackay. Kiara plans to attend Dalhousie University in Canada, where she will study psychology. Acacia Mills. Our bowling star that never got to show us what she was made of. In September, Acacia will start to study early childhood education at Bermuda College before continuing her education at an overseas university. <laughs> Chloe Mitchell. <laughs> Chloe Mitchell will study graphic design at Bournemouth University in the UK. Leonie Morton Richardson. In September, Leonie will begin her Bachelor of Commerce co-op program with a major in accounting while at Dalhousie University. <laughs> Haley O'Donnell. Haley will attend Hamilton College in New York where she will study economics and physics. Mia Oleksak. Mia plans to explore culinary courses in London and Paris before deciding whether or not to go to Imperial College in London to study physics or the University of Toronto to begin a science degree. <laughs> Sky Oliveira. In September, Sky will begin studying economics and Chinese at Tufts University in Massachusetts. <laughs> Samaya Pitcher. Samaya will travel to Wilfrid Laurier University in September to begin her studies in psychology.
just while they're walking up, it is absolutely lovely to see so many of our past graduates in the audience as well. So thank you for, for coming out. It, it's really nice to see so many friendly faces. Jamie Proctor. <laughs> Jamie will embark on her medical career by starting a Bachelor of Science at Dalhousie University in Canada. <laughs> Ella Rouge. <laughs> Ella will spend a year working with animals, specifically wombats, before attending Exeter University or the University of British Columbia to study philosophy and creative writing. Madison Smith. In September, Madison will attend Acadia University, where she will commence her studies in the classics and English. <laughs> Sophia Stevens. Sophia will begin a Bachelor of Science in Finance and International Business at the University of Reading in the UK. Skylar Trott. In September, Skylar will attend the Montclair State University in New Jersey, where I hope that she will continue to compose music. <laughs> Manaya Wainwright. Anaya will major in painting at the Savannah, Savannah College of Art and Design. <laughs> Emily Williams. In September, Emily will begin her degree in early years education at either the University of the West Bristol or the University of York. Jasmine Williams. Jasmine plans to attend the Ivy School of Business at Western University to pursue a double degree in computer science and business administration. I'm, I'm not finished. Or to begin a Bachelor of Science in Information Technology Management for Business at Loughborough University. Is that it? No, it's not. All right, let's get on to the prizes. The prizes, okay? Uh, the students are unaware of whether or not they're going to receive any prizes, so it might take them a few seconds just for their name to register and, and come on up. So, the IB2 prizes for 2021. The Lucy Glynn Memorial Award. This is a scholarship for one year. It's awarded to an IB graduate student who possesses a kind and caring character and who has achieved academic excellence and outstanding results in science. The recipient for 2021 is Jamie Proctor.
my niece is actually benefiting from Jamie's GCSE biology notes right now. <laughs> the BHS Visual Arts Bursary is a new scholarship this year. It's awarded for the first time, and it will be awarded to an IB graduate who has demonstrated their passion and commitment in the field of the visual arts and intends to specialize in the creative sector for their tertiary education. The recipients for 2021 are Manaya Wainwright and Chloe Mitchell. Part of the core of IB is TOK, or Theory of Knowledge. The IB2 Prize for Theory of Knowledge is awarded to the student who demonstrates the most curiosity about the nature of knowledge, how it's formed, and why it develops. This year, it is awarded to Mia Oleksak. completely unexpected. <laughs> For this next bit, I'm actually going to go pivot. I think I'm going to pivot. Um, Mrs. McMahon, you know, come and join me. It's a special graduation for Mrs. McMahon. She even got her hair did. I didn't believe you. Oh, yours? Okay, she said she was going to do this, and I thought she was joking. <laughs> it's my graduation, too. Um, so, CAS is core just like um, TOK. It's pass fail, it's try something new, be reflective. Not like years ago when it was ours. It's purely on reflection. <clears throat> so for this year, uh, we have a couple of things. Um, part of it is completing a project. And two of the projects that were done this year stood out. Brianna Foe, spoken word. <laughs> And before it became a hot topic, which it has done recently, the Period Poverty Sleepover Project, which raised money for charity. Um, can I have Jen, Haley, and Sky, please? So it's an opportunity to do something something different. It's not prescribed. The world's your oyster. So it's wonderful when you see students pick things that are totally different that have never been done before within our school. So well done. Oh, we forgot one. Linnea, where are you? <laughs> That's why I shouldn't be allowed up here. 
it was they did this project with year 10 students um, managed to persuade three staff members to sleep over in the IB Centre. <laughs> and they literally ran everything. The teachers, myself and the two other teachers, sat there and did nothing. We just were there, just in case. They did everything. Well done. <laughs> One of the other joys of being a CAS coordinator is now the focus is reflections, not hours. I don't want to know how many hours you spent on this. I want to know what did you learn from this. So that means I have to read lots of reflections. Um, some people love reflecting. Some people find that it is pure torture. Um, but I read them all. So once I'd gone through everybody's uh, portfolio, there were two students in particular who stood out for the quality of the reflections, um, who exemplify the IB learner profile component. And they are Mia Olisak and Emily Williams. Both of them wanted to ensure that I wasn't bored and didn't have anything to do with my time. Uh, so uh, really wrote very detailed, well-constructed reflections uh, just to make sure that I stayed busy. Thank you, Mrs. McMahon. So we've had TOK, we've had CAS, now on to the extended essay. Mia, don't get too comfy. <laughs> the IB2 Research Prize is for the highest internal mark achieved on an extended essay research paper, and the recipient for 2021 is Mia Oleksak. Just as Mia's coming up, I'll just read Dr. Curtis's comments. <laughs> Mia approached the research for her extended essay with a level of thoroughness and intellectual curiosity that would rival many university dissertations. Many students find it challenging to expand their ideas to meet the 4,000 word requirement, but Mia had the opposite problem, demonstrating a surplus of ideas, analysis, and interpretations relating to the philosophical theories of consciousness. Her final essay clarified these thoughts into a logical and detailed counter-argument against Daniel Dennett's multiple drafts model, bolstered by a confident command of the English language that occasionally had her PhD-bearing supervisor reaching for the dictionary. <laughs> well done. As part of being a rat for a round square school, we, one of the prizes that we do award is the King Constantine Medal. This is awarded to a student or a staff member within the school community who has done unusual and outstanding service work and has thereby supported and promoted the ideals of round square. That is international understanding, democracy, environment, adventure, leadership, and service. The recipient for 2021 is Jamie Proctor. I don't think it's a medal. The PTA Excellence Award. This is awarded to the student or group of students who exemplify the PTA's charitable service and philanthropic ideals. 
This monetary award is divided amongst the recipients, and they then have the privilege of allocating the funds to improving BHS. This year, the recipients are Linnea Caravella, Genevieve Lau, and Haley O'Donnell. The Roy Napier Award. This award is presented to the student who has attained the highest point score in the IB diploma as submitted to the IBO. And the recipients for this year are Leonie Morton Richardson and Mia Oleksak. Six months each. <laughs> the Falkenberry Ross Award is presented to a student for their contribution to the performing arts at BHS and in the community. The recipient for 2021 is Leonie Morton Richardson. I'll let her put that one down before she comes back up again. <laughs> the Heather Dias Memorial Prize for service to the school is awarded to Layla Kurt and Leonie Morton Richardson. <laughs> And I think just as when Mrs. Parker read out the comments from Mrs. Osset about their leadership, they were able to do this by Google Meet um, and command that respect and work together and collaborate by screen. And so it really is commendable what they've been able to do over 18 months. We have six external prizes. These are awarded by, the, by six external organizations. Firstly, the Chartered Professional Accountants of Bermuda Award. Normally, we have representatives from each organization, and they'll come up and present, but you're stuck with me. The Chartered Professional Accountants of Bermuda has been presenting this award for the outstanding student achievement for a number of years. This award is presented to students at the high school level in recognition of their scholastic achievements, leadership qualities, school spirit, and school and community involvement demonstrated throughout their final school year. Today, I present this year's Outstanding Student Award to Leonie Morton Richardson. <laughs>
The second external award is the Deloitte High School Student Award. Deloitte in Bermuda strives for ambitious students and graduates who are keen to develop their financial services or insurance experience. We offer meaningful work experiences, attractive benefits, continuing local and overseas training and development, educational support, sports and social events, corporate social initiatives, well-being programs, and more. Our student programs include high school work experiences, the Deloitte internship program, DEEP, co-op placements, the Deloitte scholarship, and the Deloitte graduate program. These programs provide students with the opportunity to experience a broader global network and be part of a vibrant and diverse organization where you get to work with forward-thinking leadership and people who are committed to making a difference. No matter how high your ambitions, we will support you. At Deloitte, we recognize the value in supporting young Bermudians to pursue their educational goals. The Deloitte High School Award recognizes an exceptional student from our school who exemplifies Deloitte's shared values of outstanding service, integrity, commitment to students, and respect for others. The recipient of the award tonight will receive a certificate award to commemorate their achievement, a financial award to put towards furthering their tertiary education, and a Deloitte gift bag. Congratulations to this year's winner. We wish you continued success in your future academic and career endeavors, and the 2021 Deloitte High School Award recipient is Aaliyah Fada. The third external prize is the Ernst & Young Prize. The EY Global Corporate Responsibility Strategy aims to positively impact one billion lives by supporting the next generation, working with impact entrepreneurs and advancing environmental stability. Our employees are transformative leaders who are purpose-driven, future-focused, and bring out the best in others and themselves. At EY, we don't just focus on who you are now, but who you can become. We are all proud of the firm's culture, which is built on our core values, people who demonstrate integrity, respect, teaming, and inclusiveness, people with energy, enthusiasm, and the courage to lead, people who build relationships based on doing the right thing. Today, we present the 2021 EY Values Award to two graduating students who most reflect these values. We are proud to recognize you and wish you all the best as you embark on the next phase of your career journey. Congratulations, Jamie Proctor and Ashlyn Lee. Our fourth award is the PwC Head Start Award of Excellence. PwC would like to congratulate the entire class of 2021. Today marks not only the celebration of your accomplishments at BHS, but also the beginning of a new and exciting chapter in your lives. PwC supports the development of Bermuda's young adults and is dedicated to promoting the accounting profession throughout Bermuda schools. On behalf of PwC, we are pleased to present the Head Start Award of Excellence. The recipient of this award excels not only inside the classroom, but also demonstrates that they are active and well-rounded while standing out as a leader and role model amongst their peers. The recipient of this award is enthusiastic, self-motivated to learn, and has been accepted to an institution of higher education. To commemorate the occasion, we are delighted to present the awardee with a plaque acknowledging their commitment to hard work and dedication, as well as a monetary award to be used towards furthering their studies. Please join me in congratulating the winner of the 2021 PwC Bermuda Head Start Award of Excellence, Genevieve Lau. Congratulations. <laughs> Genevieve 
She said thank you to me like I always gave it to her. You're welcome. Our final award is the Belko Award for Excellence in Mathematics. The recipient of this award, <laughs> why are you groaning? The recipient of this award is the student with the highest cumulative average in mathematics over the four years in high school. And the recipient for 2021 is Kiara Bircher. In the words of Mr. Okimo, Kiara is one of the most talented mathem mathematicians he has come across in his teaching career. Thank you. Can everyone hear me okay? Good? Okay. Good evening, everyone. Graduation, a noun by definition, is a ritual event where they award you a diploma in hopes that you have learned enough to be able to read. And I think we all know IP has made us accomplish that and much more. It felt fitting to start with the definition, as that's how the majority of our essay started this year. I cannot believe that we're finally here, a day that we've been talking about for what seems forever. This past year has flown by. It seems like only yesterday we were having our last first day photos and mocks. We did it. We survived IB, and I'm so proud of each and every one of us. As we all know, IB is not an easy task, and I just want to take a minute to acknowledge everything we've done this year, including RIAs, TOK presentation and essay, language orals, CAS, EE, art showcases, and all during a very stressful time. It's a lot. It really is, and I feel like sometimes when you're in the middle of things, you don't see how far you've come or how much you've accomplished. And well, I guess that's what this day is for. I have to say, when we started IB1, this was not exactly how I thought our last two years would go, but we are an amazing year group and have risen to the challenge with grace and resilience. While we did do a lot of work, I will always cherish the memories of sneaking into Miss Wedden's office to get candy, for legal reasons, that's a joke, as sitting out on the grass at lunch, recess walks around the field, our prom-themed grub days, as well as running to the Innovation Center in the rain, getting told off for wearing sweatpants, our morning bagel club on the porch, the uniform fashion show and study, and so much more. We're adults now. This is kind of strange. I remember when we were in secondary and we'd see the IBs walking across the field and they looked so old and put together. And now it's us. We're the IVs that look grown up and put together. The young gears actually look up to us. I know, crazy. We are a group of smart, driven, caring, and spirited individuals, and it's been a pleasure to grow up with you all for the past seven years, and some of us 13 years, my goodness. There have been ups and downs along the way, but we've always powered through, and I already miss seeing you all every day so much. After today, we'll be going down different paths, whether that be a gap year to explore, or studying at the variety of universities we've all been accepted to. Whatever it is, I hope it brings you love and I hope it brings you happiness. I hope you find adventure and meet amazing people along the way. And I hope in five, 10 years, or even six months, we all look back on this crazy journey and remember the laughs and good times as well as the hardships. And when we find our yearbooks and show the people we are with then, we can tell them all of the stories from the famous IB land. Now, of course we wouldn't be here without the people that love us, so I wanna say a huge thank you to our parents, families, and friends for all of your support, but I also wanna give a massive thank you to our teachers as well. 
We are also sad that you couldn't be here in person with us today. And for years I've heard the thing that makes BHS so unique is not our lovely gray exterior design, but our teachers. We really do have amazing teachers. You guys care about us, and we cannot thank you enough for the support you've given us over the years. Virtual hugs. There are two people that I'd like to especially thank, because without them, wow, our IB experience would have been quite different. Firstly, Mrs. Wedden, the IB mama bear. <laughs> the IB mama bear, therapist, taxi driver, pharmacist, advice giver, you name it, she's done it. Mrs. Wedden has been a legend since we were in year seven, and we are honestly so lucky to have had her as our head of IB. And secondly, Tay Tay, Miss Taylor, we, oh, clapping, we clap <laughs> if you want. <laughs> we, as a year group, are a handful and a half. And to be our head of year, well, I think you have to have some sort of superpowers. Because along with us, Miss Taylor was our English teacher, our TOK teacher, and EE coordinator, plus teaching other year groups. So it has been a pleasure having you as our head of year for the last two years. And fun fact, you are one of the two that have been with us for more than two years. So thank you so much. Can everyone please join me in giving a round of applause for Ms. Taylor and Ms. Wedding. <laughs> Having listened to many speeches over the years, they've always seemed to have a quote. And I felt that I'd go with one that I read quite often. The three simple rules of life, as if life is ever simple. If you do not go after what you want, you will never have it. Two, if you don't ask, the answer will always be no. And three, if you do not take a step forward, you will always be in the same place. In closing, I want to say air high five, everyone. We did it. We're done. I love you all, and let the adventure begin. Thank you. Sorry guys, I'm a little shorter than Jamie. <laughs> well guys, we're finally here. After way too many late nights, coffee breaks, and dreams of dropping out, we finally made it to graduation, celebrating our completion of high school and the end of our time here at BHS. These last two years have been interesting, to say the least, and yes, yes, we all want to blame COVID for the past years and everything we've lost. Sports, other extracurriculars, a proper school play, spirit day, torch ceremony, et cetera, et cetera. But did COVID give us IB jail? A place where we were stuck and forced to do homework? An extra math lesson instead of a fun or relaxing activity once every two weeks on a Wednesday afternoon? How about three different important exams all squashed into our final IB year? Did COVID give us that? No. In fact, COVID took away one of those exam times and gave us an extra long summer. So maybe we should be thanking COVID for everything it's done for us. Okay, no, never mind. That left a bad taste in my mouth. Sorry, Ms. Taylor, I really did try to put a positive spin on that. But in all seriousness, we've come quite far from the naive and clueless year sevens we were, and even more so from the tiny and adorable year ones. Honestly, from being the year with the most discipline points in our first ever term of secondary school to graduates who are barely hanging on by a thread, I'm quite proud of us. We survived emotional, mental, and even physical breakdowns. Sorry, Ashlyn. To online school where no one knew what they were doing, to the threat of taking IB exams during a national shelter in place. I mean, with experiences like that, I'd say we're more than prepared for our next chapter especially armed with tools we receive from our time here, like procrastination and sharing homework answers, were unstoppable. Though some of us have refused to immediately go to university due to the possibility of having to experience online school again, and honestly, I get it. I still have nightmares about doing organic chemistry over Google Meet. But that's no hate to you, Ms. Terrell. That was just no way to make that more tolerable. Honestly, though, most of us have been here for seven years while others 13. This is where we've gr grown, learned, and become who we are. I mean, for some of us, this is all we know or all we remember. So even if we can't or won't admit it, this is bittersweet. 
We created memories, relationships, and experiences that will transcend even what we remember ourselves. And as we look on into the world, we'll be able to look back and realize just how much we've truly accomplished. As we move on into our next chapters, learning more about ourselves and each other, the world around us, we'll realize we're not the only ones still figuring things out. Luckily, though, we can fall back on these times we've had and shared at BHS. We've experienced so much here, growing, changing, and losing most of our sanity. We've learned how to deal with some of the best and worst of times, whether that's stealing all of Miss Wedden's candy, being sent to the guidance counselor against your will, crying alone or with friends in the bathroom, <laughs> or screaming and jumping around because you finally finished that EE or IA that was due at least two weeks before. These memories and habits we will take with us to university and the workplace, for better or for worse. But I can't imagine having had different experiences to draw on. Whether it was calming lunch hours with classmates, talking about serial killers, or singing old Disney songs, to running back to form class after tort ceremony for another Oreo. From doing yoga on the porch to Miss Wedden yelling at us to go home where they love us. These I'll look back on fondly. I know Jamie's already mentioned this, but our amazing teachers who stuck with us to finish that IA, EE, TOK presentation, cast reflection, study sessions, etc., who worked with us so incredibly hard to help us understand the curriculum in a way tailored perfectly for our learning. To those staff members who cared for us like our own mothers, you deserve the world. To our parents, surrogate parents, and guardians who at the very least paid for us not only to go through IGCSE, but the trenches of IB during a global pandemic. You've really outdone yourselves. <laughs> but seriously, you stuck with us through mood swings, late nights, even if that just means you showed up in our room at 3 a.m. wondering why we were still awake before mumbling something and going back to bed. And support you've given us for the past 17 or 18 years of life. You are our first teachers, and from you, we've learned some of the most important life lessons, like not saying everything that comes to mind in stranger danger, even though you didn't actually come up with that phrase. <laughs> we know that you will always be in our corner looking out for us and constantly wanting what's best for us and loving us unconditionally, even if and when we forget to call. Sorry. <laughs> now to my graduating class. Oh, there's so much to say and oh, so little time to say it. I'm so proud of all of us. Whether you felt you reached your academic potential or not, whether you thought you acted horribly at one point or another, we all have something to be proud of. Whether it's the fact that you're a wonderful plant mom, you worked on your mental health, you don't cry as much as before, or you cry a lot and you're proud of it, you should be. And of course, because this is a graduation speech, I simply cannot end without some kind of advice. Even though we're all the same age and you might not even resonate with you, stay true to who you are. Remember that you have made it through 100% of the problems, issues, and struggles in your life. And remember to hold on to those people who make you smile just by looking at them. To my BHS graduating class of 2021, it has truly been a pleasure. Thank you, ladies. Very different speeches. Very well done. Please stand for the school song.
Graduates, can I ask you to stand, please? So I'm honored to read the charge to the graduates. It is the hope of everyone here tonight that your pathway may be straight and true, that your destination may be golden with happiness, fulfillment, and alive with vibrant promise. It is my privilege to officially request that you now move your tassels across in recognition of your graduation from BHS. Walk the world proudly. Walk the world proudly as graduates of the BHS IB program. Congratulations. Good evening, everyone. I would like to start off by saying to my fellow graduates, we did it, congratulations, class of 2021. As our ceremony is coming to an end, our last moments of being seniors are up. Being in the present moment, you don't really realize how fast time flies, from playing fairies and building roly-poly houses in primary, to being the scared little year sevens entering senior school, to the first day of IB1 in our colorful shirts after years of wanting that uniform and letting everyone know. Now sitting here today in our caps and gowns to end this chapter. I think no one realizes how far you've come till you're in the moment. When we were young, I think we always thought about what it would be, but now here it's so surreal. But I do believe that we are ready to go out into the big wide world. Because looking around, I couldn't be more proud of and happier with the people I've been able to grow up with. And I know that each and every one of you is going to make a beautiful life, for, well, each and every one of us is going to make a beautiful life for ourselves, no matter what the circumstances bring. And wherever you end up, remember that it is okay to make your own path and not always follow the traditional one. Like we've mentioned, IB isn't easy in the first place. And finishing IB in a pandemic is a whole different story. And I think with all the ups and downs that we have had, our year group has always been there for one another. And I think that the relationship that we've built through these years and our little IB family that we will leave with so many amazing memories and friendships that we'll, we will keep forever. And like we've mentioned before, we can't forget that this journey couldn't have been possible without our hard-working teachers, our loving family and friends who have played important roles to get us here where we are today, and the constant support and sacrifices that they make. So thank you so much and for coming here tonight. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Now, so my fellow graduates, go off into the world and start your new chapter. Try everything and experience life to the fullest. And in the great words of Dr. Seuss, oh, the places you'll go, today is your day. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. I think that you are all amazing people, and I will miss BHS, and I will miss you all so dearly, and I can't wait to meet again. But it is Bermuda, so it's very likely I will see you very soon. So, <laughs> so again, congratulations. So, in closing, I would also like to highlight and present a token of our appreciation to a few wonderful women who were vital in helping us through this journey and making our experience of BHS a successful one. So, Ms. Taylor, Mrs. Wedden, Mrs. Powell, and Mrs. Parker. So, if you could give us a round of applause. Thank you. Who's this girl? Wedden.
Good evening, everyone. Maybe please bow your heads for a word of prayer or a moment of self-reflection. Dear Lord, I thank you for this day you have given us, a day to celebrate all the accomplishments of the class of 2021. Thank you for allowing us to celebrate this special occasion with our friends, families, and teachers present. I would like to thank you for placing these incredible teachers and VHS staff in our lives. Thank you for giving them the strength daily to do the utmost best for us. There's, and, no, sorry, they're students, and I ask that you continue to give them the strength. I pray that they know how much we, the class of 2021, truly appreciate all the work they have done for us. I want to thank you for giving us, as students, the strength to, con the strength to continue on when everything seems wrong. I ask that we remember that every test that we went through these last two years will be our testimony for years to come. As we part ways, I pray that we do not forget the lessons and advice that BHS has instilled in us. May we continue to be ever tending to the goal. I ask you to guide our steps into our new chapters in our life. May you protect us as we go to our new campuses, our new cities, and our new countries. May you continue to give us a hope for our future when it seems daunting at times. May you provide for us every, every need that we need and show us what is beneficial for our life. Thank you for placing people in our lives to be our support system. And may we never forget them as we continue on this life's journey. And I just want to thank you for all the memories we have made as a year thus far. May you please bless everyone who is present tonight, whether under this tent or in the comforts of home. Please give us traveling mercies as we depart and a sense of peace, knowing that we may not know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. This we pray in your most precious name, amen. <laughs>